All right, carbohydrates are uh, biological molecules that contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Simple sugars, uh, or monosaccharides as we'll begin to call them, have a very simple formula. For every carbon there is, let's say there's n number of carbons, it can be, you know, three, four, five, six, uh, there are that many water molecules. And so initially it was thought that these were hydrates of carbons, um, and hence the name carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are one of the most uh, abundant biological molecule on Earth. Um, and one of the reasons why is that it's used uh, as an energy source for a lot of animals, including us. Uh, we get the majority of our carbohydrates, or a lot of carbohydrates, uh, from the photosynthesis of uh, carbon dioxide and water that plants do to make uh, carbohydrates like glucose, which is C6H12O6. So you can see that there are six carbons and glucose. And so that means there's six water molecules, or six times two, 12, and six oxygen, C6H12O6. Uh, uh, they also make oxygen, which we breathe, of course. And of course, uh, this would be the reaction for photosynthesis. It's sort of an uphill reaction. It takes energy, and so the plants get the energy from uh, the sun. And of course, we break down glucose uh, with oxygen that we breathe in and cellular respiration, and that's how we get energy out of this system. This is how we would... Um, break down glucose and the products would be carbon dioxide and water. Now as I said glucose is a uh, simple sugar uh, or a monosaccharide. Monosaccharides cannot be broken down uh, any further. Uh, it would take uh, more than one monosaccharide linked together, such as a disaccharide. Uh, the disaccharides can be broken down into smaller carbohydrates, simpler sugars, um, and thus monosaccharides. So a disaccharide would be an example of two monosaccharides linked together. All right, and then of course that can keep going and so you can also have polysaccharides. Which, which consists of more than two. And those can grow quite large such as in starch or cellulose. You can have literally hundreds or thousands of uh, monosaccharides put together. Now let's talk about uh, some examples of monosaccharides. Uh, as we just said, uh, glucose is one such monosaccharide with the C6H12O6 formula. Okay, uh, the actual structure of glucose would look something like this. Sort of usually we uh, put all of the carbons in sort of a straight line for one type of way we're going to show the structural formula. So that's uh, six carbons.
six carbons. And there's lots of hydroxyl groups, and in glucose case, there's also an aldehyde. And the specific orientation of the OH groups on each carbon gives rise to some very important chemistry, um, chirality, and then different linkage linkages between monosaccharides, which we'll talk about later, and of course can be very important. Okay, so there's glucose. Uh, glucose's structure. Uh, as I said, it has an aldehyde uh, functional group in addition to all of the hydroxyl or um, OH groups, and so glucose is a type of aldose. a monosaccharide with an aldehyde functional group uh, on it. Another uh, monosaccharide with the same exact formula, C6H12O6, is fructose. Since fructose has the same exact molecular formula, uh, but we're calling it something different, it must be an isomer, it must have a different structural formula. And it turns out that fructose is actually has a fructose has a ketone functional group instead of an aldehyde like glucose. So fructose's uh, structural formula would look like this. And here is the ketone functional group for fructose. And since it has a ketone, we call it a ketose monosaccharide. Now these are one way that we can uh, show the structural formula of monosaccharides, whether it be glucose or fructose. But it turns out that in solution, in aqueous solutions, um, these monosaccharides don't stay in this sort of straight chain uh, configuration. They actually turn and sort of fold in on each other on itself to form a ring structure. And we can see that process here. Here is glucose, the aldehyde, in its sort of straight chain form. Um, the carbon uh, on one end of the molecule, the first carbon, uh, we'll actually make a connection with the uh, OH group on the fifth carbon right here. So this OH group on the fifth carbon will uh, form a bond with the first carbon here. And you can see that um, essentially the mechanism for that here, the electrons, uh, lone pair of electrons on that OH group will form a bond here. Um, this the um, carbonyl on that first carbon will form a hydroxyl group. And then when we show it in its skeletal function, it looks like this. Now, one thing that uh, we might point out uh, from time to time is that the uh, carbon uh, right next to the, the first carbon, uh, as we numbered it here, or the carbon uh, that's connected to this ether group in this monosaccharide, we'll call this the anomeric carbon. And so we might need to talk about that anomeric carbon when we talk about uh, different uh, linkages because this uh, hydroxyl group on this first carbon can essentially be in the down configuration or the up configuration. And those lead to different linkages uh, when we're starting to form uh, disaccharides. 